90s, the Miami Hurricanes won four national titles in nine seasons. One of the great runs in college football history. Now, a decade removed from their last championship, these Canes possess an eerie similarity to those Canes. The coach, Butch Davis, learned how to build a winner from his mentor, Jimmy Johnson. Ken Dorsey, the sophomore quarterback, oh, so reminiscent of the legendary Bernie Kosar. Playmaker Santana Moss, whose all-round skills mimic those of predecessor Lamar Thomas. Wide receiver Reggie Wayne has eclipsed the marks of the incomparable Michael Irvin. And Damian Lewis continues the tradition of defensive excellence that began with the great Jerome Brown. The spirit of those great players permeates the soul of this team. Miami stands on the precipice again. We welcome you to the Home Depot College Football on CBS. This afternoon from the Orange Bowl in Miami, a Big East encounter featuring the Eagles of Boston College and the Hurricanes of Miami. Senior day in the Orange Bowl, Dan Morgan. Right behind him. Santana Moss, two of the 17 who play their final home game today for the Hurricanes of Miami, and they do so before a half-full house in this Big East encounter. The Eagles of Boston College coming to town with a 6-4 and four mark, Miami at 9-1. And happy holidays, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist, along with Todd Blackledge and Jill Arrington. Welcome to Miami. 17 seniors, their final game. My, how many miles they have traveled together. From the purgatory of NCAA sanctions in the mid-90s, a 5-6 and six record in 97, winning seasons 98 and 99, now perched on a potential national championship game. Al Blades, one of the 17, said it for all of them when he was quoted as saying, the great thing about our senior class is that we all love Miami so much that we came here when other guys would not. And my, how much they do have to play for, reflected in the current Bowl Championship Series standings. Oklahoma number one, Florida State two, Miami three, Washington followed by Oregon State, and Virginia Tech. And here to lead us <laughs> through the morass of what, what Miami must do, Todd, what, what's in store for them? All right, I'll break it down for you. First of all, <laughs> they've got to take care of business and win today. If possible, win impressively. Then they'll turn their eyes west and watch what Oklahoma does today and next week. They need Oklahoma to either lose one of those two games or to win impressively and steal some of the first place computer votes away from Florida State. But all is not lost, even if they don't get into the Orange Bowl to play. If not, they can go to the Fiesta or the Sugar Bowl, and if Oklahoma loses in the Orange Bowl, they could still be crowned the national champion, according to the AP poll. We have seen Miami three times. Uh, what most impresses you about them as a team? I think offensively, they're the best football team in college football out there, and the reason they're so good is they're so versatile. They can get it done both running the football and passing the football. Reminds me of some of the old Dallas Cowboy teams that Butch Davis was a part of. In fact, this offense, we're referring to it as Butch's Bunch. If you want to stop the run, you got to worry about these wide receivers. Santana Moss, he's the big play guy. 25 career touchdowns, each one averaging 49 yards. Reggie Wayne, he's Mr. Reliable. He's had a catch in 35 straight games, nine touchdowns on the season. Jeremy Shockey inside of the tight end, 10 catches the last four games. You want to stop the pass? What are you going to do about the running backs? James Jackson, the last seven games, has averaged 116 yards a game. The two fullbacks, Najee Davenport and D.J. Williams, they're also talented runners, but very dangerous coming out in the pass pattern. The offensive line, anchored by the two bookend and defensive or offensive tackles, Bryant McKinney on the left side, Joaquin Gonzalez on the right side. They're averaging 190 yards rushing, and they've only given up eight sacks. But the guy who holds it all together, the quarterback, Ken Dorsey, he's the guy who distributes the football. All he's done is go 12-1 and as a starter, and in those 13 games, they've averaged 44 points a game. Boston College comes in. There's Butch Davis in his sixth year as the head coach at Miami. And for BC, Tom O'Brien in his fourth year, a six and four season, so they are bowl eligible. Boston College will receive Jonathan Ordway and J.P. Camilla are the deep men. Todd Sievers will kick off. 
And it's a dandy. That is the 27th touchback for Todd Seavers in the last eight games. He has really been a significant factor in the special teams play. So it will come out to the 20, and the Eagles of Boston College will take over first and 10. Tim Hasselback, who missed the last game against Notre Dame because of a sprained knee sustained against Temple, is healthy and gets the start. And they love his spirit and what he brings to this team, not just talent and experience, but his spirit and his will to succeed. It really is an infectious result on the rest of this Boston College team. On first down, draw play. And it goes to Cedric Washington. He's out to the 25. It's a quick pickup of five. And Dan Morgan makes the tackle. Let's check the Boston College Eagle offensive lineup. This is a very good offensive line. Michael Cook, LeCare, Coppin, Zukaskis, and Mark Colombo as a unit. They have allowed four sacks this year. Washington, Utzler start in the backfield. Jamal Burke, Diedrich DeWalt, the wideouts, and the tight end is Robert Ellis. Second and five. Hassel back with a play fake, swings it out, caught by Hustler, the fullback. He rumbles across the 30. Hassel, the tackle is made by Mike Rumpf, but that's a first down, Boston College, and we check Miami's defense. Up front, Green, Joseph, Lewis, and Green, Cornelius. All-American linebacker Dan Morgan in the middle. All-time leading tackler in Big East history. Clark and Campbell on the outsides. And a very good defensive secondary led by Edward Reed, who has eight interceptions this season. Washington stays in the backfield, and Boston College goes from the shotgun. Blitz. Hasselback drifting back. Perfect play. Great Here's set. Washington. He's got Coppin in front. Coppin is caught from behind. Washington, that is, by Morgan, but a gain of 20 yards. And an excellent start for Boston College. They got their first first down, and Miami said, okay, let's blitz. And the blitz was perfectly picked up. A great call on the screen to Cedric Washington, and he is off to a fine start. Now, Cedric had 183 yards, a career high against Miami last year up in Boston, and a fast start in this one for Cedric. The wall goes wide left. Jamal Burke, bottom of the screen, wide right. First down after a 20-yard game. Washington comes right, slips through, and moves it inside the 40 to the 39. Well, this is a very good running team. Yeah, well, they're good all together. I mean, they throw it well, they run it well, they're good on third down, particularly when they can stay in those third and five or less situations, and that is critical in this ball game today. Miami plays their best defensively when they get you an unmanageable third down situation. So far, Boston College starting exactly the way they need to. Second and three from the 39. Reed in the ball game, play fake. Fire it, tight end has it. That's Mike Guazzo, and that will be enough for the first down. So a very impressive Boston College start. Everything goes off of their running game. They're running it a little bit successfully. Now they go play action. Fake it to Cedric. The linebackers bite on the play fake, and that enables Guazzo to get behind the linebackers, but in front of the strong safety, Edward Reed. And William Green is in the backfield. Excuse me, Todd. Leading rusher in this uh, on this ball club over a thousand yards. Corner blitz. Here's Green. Looks for a block from Hemmings downfield. And William Green with a quick scamper of 17 yards. Perfect call by Dana Bible. I'm not sure he knew the corner blitz was coming, but watch the blitz come from the corner, and then William Green is going to go right past the corner blitz. The fullback picks him up. There's nobody then in this area of the field, and William Green is able to exploit the corner blitz for a big play. William Green for the season two, 200-yard-plus rushing efforts. You see them, 225 and 223. First and 10, Boston College. And off to Green, going left, cuts it back upfield and surges inside the five-yard line. Tom O'Brien could not have a better start for his football team. 
Right now, the offensive line, and this is the strength of the Boston College team, their offensive line. A couple seniors up there, Paul Zukaskis, the right guard, is their best player, and they are controlling things in this opening drive. And remember, Vern, Miami's defense has not given up an opening possession score since the opener against McNeese State. So this could really take some steam out of the hard-charging Hurricanes. And had McNeese State not scored on that opening drive, the final would have been 62-7. to <laughs> There it is right there. Interesting, though, that McNeese State game is proving costly because they are a Division I AA school, and in this uh, convoluted BCS yeah. formula, you get no credit for a victory over a Division I AA school. So among the factors that are in the mix, just short of the first down, so it'll be second and a foot. Excellent yep. touchdown percentage there. You see the national average, 58. Boston College does a nice job of getting it in the end zone. And against an explosive team like Miami, when you get the ball in here, you cannot settle for field goals. You need to score touchdowns. Double tight end set, I formation, one wide out. That's DeWalt, who's wide right. Green is the deep back in the off. He gets the handoff. That's going to be a first and goal. Boston College just outside the one. Nice block by the fullback Ryan Utzler. They ran over the left side. Paul LeCare, the, the left guard, but an excellent block by the fullback Ryan Utzler. He doesn't get to run the football very much in this offense. Catches a few passes. He has not ever carried it this season, but he's a good lead blocker in the I formation and a good receiver. Power formation is strength left now. There's the handoff to Green. Touchdown, Boston College. For the first time since September, the Miami defense has yielded a touchdown on an opening drive. Quite a statement by Tom O'Brien's team. They went right down the field, and they did what they did best. They run behind their offensive line. Zukaskis gets a good block. The fullback, Utzler, with a good block. And then William Green, you see the power that he runs with, puts it in the end zone. Mike Sutfin, the fifth-year senior, is on for the extra point. He is having an extraordinary season. He is now 39 of... Oh, no! Ha! Jinx! <laughs> Boink! He was 38 of 39 on extra points. Every point counts in a game like this. You mentioned he's had a great season, but a touchdown nonetheless for Boston College and a great start. It's time to get ready for a rush of adrenaline only Pontiac can deliver. It's time to get your $500 holiday bonus for $1,250 total cash back on any 2001 Grand Am. So get to your Pontiac dealer and light up the season. John Burgess started this company in a second floor bedroom. Nine months later, <laughs> it looks like a good idea. Jeannie Gagner and Alan Robinson, AXA advisors. With new wealth came new responsibility for John and his employees. We provided key man insurance and estate planning for him. Deferred compensation and 401ks for his people. AXA advisors helps business owners succeed. It's not just about making it. It's about making it last. AXA advisors, building futures. What's going on? Hey. Wow, this is nice. But I thought Stacy said if you bought new tools, she gets a new dining room set. Yeah, she did. So where are the table and chairs? You're standing on them. <laughs> Fine woodworking tools from Rigid. Name proven by pros since 1923. Take our 12-inch compound miter saw. Best choice for deck building, remodeling, and finish work. Rigid. Buy them at the Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. Samsung joyfully introduces the world as you make it. Where our digital technology has one job, to make life more fun. We want to thrill you, connect you, charm you, satisfy you, and delight you. Everyone's invited. To the Samsung Digital Experience. 
NFL Today checks out Tampa Bay's topsy-turvy season and the recent rise of the Ravens. All that and more Sunday on CBS. Very impressive opening drive for the Eagles of Boston College. Idle last week, they lost on the road at Notre Dame the game prior to that. And here's the uh, note that Todd mentioned. That's the first, first quarter touchdown since game three. Sortino kicks it off. Daryl Jones drifts back, thinks about it. And it'll be a touchback and come out to the 20-yard line. And this explosive Miami offense under coach Butch Davis takes the field for the first time with Ken Dorsey, who is having a splendid season at quarterback. And he's leading the Big East in passing and total offense. And he just, he makes such good decisions. That, that's the thing. In his career, 29 touchdowns and only five interceptions this year. Only four or four of those five this year. And three in one game. Yeah. Here's the first down. Reverse, Santana Morris comes left. Flies down the sidelines, still going. Pushed down from behind by Ralph Parent. What an explosive start for Santana Moss and the Miami Hurricanes. Well, Santana Moss is going to get the headlines, but watch Reggie Wayne block for Santana Moss on the reverse. This play doesn't make a big play if Reggie Wayne doesn't get a block on the perimeter. He stalks his guy, he stays right on him, and that allows Moss to tiptoe down the sideline. Does a great job of staying in bounds, even though he was losing his balance. The All-American Santana Moss in his senior season opens with a reverse of 57 yards. This is, as you can see, a big play offense. Dorsey, quick flip left side. Reggie Wayne has now caught a pass in 37 games in succession. That is a Miami school record. Well, we introduced you to Ken Dorsey up front. It's McKinney, who is having a sensational year. Gonzalez on the other side. In between, LaFair, Romberg, and Bibla. James Jackson in the backfield. Needs 60 to get 1,000 for the season. D.J. Williams, Moss and Wayne, and the tight end, Ivan Mercer. You'll also see Jeremy Shockey in that spot. Jackson. Loose ball at the 20. Who came up with it? Boston College came up with it. This is a team that has lost 15 fumbles this season, but not many recently. No, not many recently. And, and this is a team that right now does not look like they've got their focus completely together. A little bit more concerned about the BCS than BC. And this is the only thing that's going to keep Boston College close in this game is if they can force some turnovers. James Jackson has the ball stripped out by Goodwin and a big turnover for the B.C. Eagle. If you're an underdog like B.C. and you don't match up physically across the board, one of the ways you can stay in a game is to create turnovers. Hasselback play fake. Goes deep down the middle for his tight end. Robert Ellis is popped by Edward Reed. The pass incomplete. This pass was a little behind Ellis. If it was out in front of him, I think Ellis holds on to this even though he gets hit. But watch him have to reach back for the ball. And then he's hit in the back by Ed Reed. Good play by Reed. But if that ball's out in front, it's a completion for Ellis. Second down, 10. Look at him rumble out across the 30. First down, Boston College after a gain of 15. You want to know what the keys to the game are today for both teams? Well, first of all, for the Miami Hurricanes, they've got to play BC and not the BCS. Be focused. And they've got to protect the football, which they have already turned it over. BC, avoid third and five plus. Keep everything in front of them, all those big plays. And then they've got to turn this into a slugfest and not let it be a track meet. So far, Boston College doing what they need to do. First and 10, BC. They lead it by six. Play fake. Right side, incomplete, intended for Jamal Burke, but good coverage. Phillip Buchanan and Al Blades were both uh, 
perched in the neighborhood. Now well, let's see how Oklahoma is doing. Back to New York, here's Tim Brenda. Particularly speaking of the BCS, after Quentin Griffin had a 39-yard run, Josh Heifel hits Curtis Bacon on a three-yard touchdown, and OU has a 7-0 lead over Oklahoma State. We'll keep you posted throughout, Bird. Thank you, Tim. Second and 10 here, a 6-0 Boston College lead. Hasselback slips the ball to Washington, who's hit at the line of scrimmage. Picks up three yards, the tackle made by Al Blades, number seven. Al, one of the uh, 17 seniors on this ball club. And this is the kind of situation that Boston College needs to try to avoid in the ball game. A third down and six yards. This is when Miami is most effective because they've got speed all over the field and they give you a lot of goofy looking looks with their nickel defense. They move around, they shift, they jump in and out. They create a lot of confusion. Snap is back on third down. Underneath pattern, Ryan Reed. That's short of the first down. And let's uh, introduce you to the third member of our commentary team. Here's Jill Aaron. Dan Morgan had a little adjustment made by the medical staff. He has turf toe. So they took out one of the cleats on the bottom of his shoe to help relieve the pressure it was causing on the ball of his foot. I'll keep an eye on him to see if it feels okay, but he's now playing back in the game. Hi, right, Jill. Thank you. On fourth down, Kevin McMyler on the punt, nice and high, and Santana Moss with a fair catch. Great kick. Great it kick. was indeed. That's 50 yards on the punt, nothing on the return by the ever-dangerous Santana Moss. Time call. Every touch. A neck. It might seem ordinary, but not when it belongs to someone you love and you'd like to slip something extraordinary onto it. Every look. This Christmas, come to K Jewelers, where our diamond pendants start from just $99.95. Every kiss. And every K diamond is hand selected for exceptional beauty. Every kiss begins with K. K Jewelers. Dr. Roger Maxfield is ready for a professional money manager. The kind he never thought would handle individual portfolios. One of the best is a few feet away. If only the two could meet. See how we earn it. Solomon Smith Barney. get ready for a rush of adrenaline only Pontiac can deliver. It's time to get your $500 holiday bonus for $1,250 total cash back on any 2001 Grand Prix. So get to your Pontiac dealer and light up the season. Remember when traveling by air was a pleasure. Will it ever be again? Find out on 60 Minutes Sunday. You get a good view of downtown Miami on this muggy November day. The Budweiser.com airship is flying over Miami today to provide college football fans with all of these spectacular aerial shots. We invite you to enjoy. Six nothing. Hurricanes have the ball down by that amount. James Jackson, good defensive effort by a Boston College team that is susceptible to the run. Let's check this defensive unit for Boston College. Up front, it's Rossi for Sean Guthrie out with an injury. Doug Goodwin, Keith Levitt. The linebackers, Scott Bradley and Ryan Birch, along with Curtis Bolden. And in the secondary, Lenny Walls is having a particularly good year. Parent, Johnson, Jonathan Ordway. There's Frank Spaziani, the defensive coordinator. He's had to patch up his defense all season. Dorsey, deep left side. Reggie Wayne, beautiful pass. And a big gain all the way up to the 46. Wow. 33-yard pickup. Spot the ball at the 45. 
Excellent timing by the quarterback, Dorsey and Reggie Wayne. And they're going against the best defender now. Lenny Walls has played very well for BC, but Wayne turns him around. And then the excellent throw by Dorsey. A lot of field to work with out there one-on-one. -on -one. 170 career catches now for the senior Reggie Wayne, the all-time leader in that category for Miami. First and 10, the game was 33, ball in the 45. Jackson coming left, gets a great block from McKinney. Jackson. And uh, is down at the 49, that's a gain of four yards. Test your sports knowledge, play Atlanta trivia at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online keyword CBS Sportsline. We're, we're, we're getting better. We're going to get the Ibis to do it a couple times here before the game's I, over. See how I'm, afraid, I'm afraid he may want to sleep between us. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and six. Good play. Jackson. Jackson Curtis Bolden. You take a look at what James Jackson has done. I mean, when he started out the season, he was rotating with Najee Davenport and Clinton Portis. He wasn't getting a lot of carries. He wasn't really getting into a flow of the game. But the last four or five games, he has really been the feature guy. You see what he's done in his career. Those are some pretty good names that he's in amongst right there with the Hurricanes. Third and six. Dorsey looks down the middle. Reggie Wayne slips a tackle. Still running. What a block he got from Santana Moss. And then a flag is thrown at the tackle. What a block by Santana Moss. I think Reggie Wayne may have pulled a hamstring at the end of this play. But Reggie Wayne got a huge block for Moss on the first play, the reverse. And Santana more than repaid the favor on this one. A little slant route, and I think Miami and Dorsey throws this as well as anybody. It's all timing into the inside. Boston College has to keep everything in front with these big play receivers. They don't do it that time. And then watch the end of the play. You saw the block by Moss. And at the end of the play on the tackle, I think Reggie Wayne hurt his hamstring. Watch Santana Moss coming from the left side of your screen right there. Huge block on Lenny Walls. And then a face mask at the end of the play by Ralph Parent. Referee is John Smith. Wayne up. They are so explosive, Vern. I mean, they just have so many weapons all over the place. And they make so many big plays. You see what Reggie Wayne has done already. We showed you that graphic earlier, 151 plays over 10 yards. I mean, that is a staggering number. And they just, they've got so many guys that can make big plays when they get their hands on the football. And Ken Dorsey does a super job of getting the ball to the right people at the right time. Half the distance on the face mask call. It's first and goal from the three. Three tight end set now for Miami. Play fake, Dorsey. He can stroll in. Now he pulls back and throws it away. Good decision. Yep. Robert Williams, the third tight end, was uh, perched in the corner, but well covered. Nice reaction by the BC defense that time. It looked for a moment like the play fake. Everybody anticipating run with that formation and personnel group, but they reacted quickly and forced Dorsey to throw it away. As a starter, 12 and one. There's a 29 to five touchdown interception ratio. Second and goal. Jackson. Down short of the goal at the one yard line. Great block by Bryant McKinney. This left tackle, I mean, this guy is impressive. He's 6'9", 330 pounds. He's only been playing organized football for five years. And he just knocked his guy all the way back into the B.C. backfield and allowed Jackson to get inside the one-yard line. There's McKinney. Developing as a run blocker already, a really extraordinary pass blocker. Thirty goal. What about sneaking a 
long fumble. Scott Bradley was down and camped on it, but I think wow. Miami got there first. Well, they made a quick call. There's a couple guys down there wrestling for it. Ken Dorsey, he's a lean, lanky guy, but he went fighting after the football after he dropped that one. This did not look like a clean exchange from the very beginning. You see Dorsey's trying to run a quarterback sneak, and there's the football, and it's Dorsey in there fighting for it. Never got the snap. Never a clean exchange on the quarterback sneak between Romberg and Dorsey and Scott Bradley, the linebacker, in there trying to get the football. Todd Seavers will try the field goal on fourth down. It is up and good from 19 yards out. But with a first and goal at the three, Miami has to settle for three. A big win for Boston College. Previous two times we've been here with Florida State, Virginia Tech, sellout crowds in both of those instances. Something less than that today. But uh, this is a very significant game for both these teams, really. Miami. With the field goal from Todd Sievers has equaled the scoring record for the school established in 1986. Jonathan Ordway, the trackster, and J.P. Camella are deep. Todd Sievers will kick off. This one will float down. Fumble picked up. It's Ordway who is not down at the five-yard line by number five, Andre Johnson. Probably not a very good decision by Ordway. When he did not field it cleanly, he should have stayed there because one thing Miami does is field kicks as well as anybody in the country because of the great speed on their team. And once he had to pick it up off the ground, probably would have been wise to stay in there and start at the 20. 6-3, 5.49 to go, opening quarter. Boston College with a touchdown in the opening drive. The extra point was missed. Miami has fumbled twice, lost one. Green, four and a half yards out to the 10-yard line. You know, Jan Morgan is there. Yeah, and Joe reported that Dan Morgan had to go out in that first series with a foot injury. This is an injury he's had most of the season, and he has played in pain all year. Last week, he irritated it again up in the carrier dome, playing on that hard turf, went in, had to get x-rays in the second quarter, and came back out, finished the game, wanted to play the rest of the game barefooted because he said his foot feels better with no shoe on. But he has had a problem all year. Drop play. Green. Tough run. Yes, indeed. First down, Boston College at the 20. That's a gain of 10. Now, tomorrow, NFL doubleheader for you on CBS. In the first game, many of you will see Buffalo at Tampa Bay. The Dolphins go into Indianapolis to take on the Colts and three other games late. And it is all preceded by the NFL today, beginning at 12 noon Eastern time. Burn, that was a huge run right there on second down. It avoids the third and long situation, gives them a little breathing room out to the 20-yard line. Green will get it again. And he is popped by Al Blades and Chris Campbell. Now, pretty soon, Tim Hasselbeck is going to have to make some plays throwing it down the field because Miami is not going to stay in their base defense and allow BC to run the football at will. They're going to sneak an extra guy or two up there to outnumber them in the running game. And that's going to leave man-to-man -man coverage outside, and Hasselbeck is going to have to make some plays throwing the football. Ryan Reed and Kenny Gaskins, Keith Hemmings rather, come wide to the left. And on second down, BC goes from the spread. Blitz coming from the corner. Nice read, Utzler, the fullback. An equally nice tackle up high by Dan Morgan. Ryan Utzler. Right now, I'm seeing Miami and Greg Schiano call more blitzes than I've seen in a long time. And the reason is the running game is hurting the Miami Hurricanes. The blitz on the outside, Morgan makes the tackle and then had to limp off the field again after that play. There's Greg Schiano, and he knows that this team right now, Boston College, is establishing some things at the line of scrimmage. And this is what they want. Third down and three is a manageable situation for Tom O'Brien's team. 
Perazzo sets up tight left. Reed in motion, under pressure. Hasselback has to throw it away. Busted play. It sure they, looked like it. Yeah, they weren't ready. The, the ball was snapped. Nobody was on the same page in a wasted third down and three situation for Boston College. Miami's moving around a lot on D. You see all this action. The tight end is going to try to shift or go in motion, and nobody on the same page. The ball snapped early. Zukoks, because he never even got out of his stance. McKyler, McMiner on for the second punt of the day. Had a dandy the first time out. No return by Santana Moss. Another good one. He booms this. Moss with a second fair oh. catch. Mucks it. And it pops right into the hands of a teammate. Yes. Maurice Sykes. How about that? Third fumble for the Miami Hurricanes in the first quarter. Lack of concentration fumbles. All of them. Moss a little bit distracted maybe by his own guy Alfonso Marshall got kind of pushed right back into his sight line and didn't make the clean catch and Sykes there to fall on the loose football first down 10 Miami with 348 to go in the opening quarter Jackson and DJ Williams in the backfield Sets up a screen pass. Oh, oh my boy. goodness. <laughs> wow. Justin Hines had a hand on it. He had a hand on it, and he had his eyes on the end zone. Because if he catches it, he's got a lead blocker there on Dorsey, and he scores. They read the screen, and Justin Hines is a true freshman from Piscataway, New Jersey. But watch him read the screen right here. Gets his hands up, and you see if he catches that, that's a touchdown for Boston College. Second down and 10. BC resets, Dorsey back. Has time, deep across the middle, tipped again. Ryan Birch. Ryan Birch, the middle linebacker, number 96. And uh, Reggie Wayne went down. We get an update from Jill Arrington. Well, Reggie Wayne pulled his left hamstring on that great run in the last possession. The trainers massaged it out, gave him some stretches. He was running around to try to stay loose, and he's giving it a go. All right, Jill, thank you. You know, one thing about this Miami team, they've had the great senior class, the leadership, but they are mentally and physically tough. Morgan's played with pain. A lot of other guys, Santana Moss has played hurt most of the year. Damian Lewis. Dorsey has time. Good defensive coverage and the catch made by the tight end of the 35-yard line. Short of the first down. Ivan Mercer, number 86. But Miami is going to be forced to cough it up. Well, you mentioned that Miami had time, but it's just a four-man rush. But watch the coverage downfield. Dorsey, a lot of time, but nowhere to go with the football. Excellent coverage by the BC secondary. Mercer with a nice one-handed grab, but short of the first down. That brings on Freddie Capshaw, the putter, for the first time. He sails it. Diedrich DeWall backed up, grabs it at the 13. Aaron Moser slices through quickly to make the tackle. Number 26, another of the seniors playing his final home game. 52-yard punt and six on the return. Tonight on CBS, someone is preying on the elderly. Now a vicious killer must be stopped before he strikes again. Craig T. Nelson stars in an all-new episode of what viewers are calling the best new drama of the year, The District, tonight on CBS. Burn. Yes. So far, this offensive line of Boston College with four seniors up there really doing a nice job of establishing tempo and making this a slugfest. Play fake, hassle back, pressure. He's got Camella open down the middle. J.P. Camella, first down inside Miami territory. Out of the backfield, out of the fullback position. They don't throw this pass very often. Miami busted the coverage. Nobody picked up the fullback. Watch Camella go right up the middle of the field. The good play action fake. And right before the blitz gets him, Hasselback gets the football to Camella. That only the fourth catch this season for J.P. Camella. He's yet to carry the ball. And he picks up 34 and a first down at the Miami 45. Washington, they are 
are running so well. This is a good, solid, big offensive line that Boston College has. And they've got two hard-nosed, tough running backs in Cedric Washington and William Green. Shorten the game. That was a goal for Boston College. They've got the time of possession edge, and they've got the edge on the scoreboard right now. Second down, one. BC up by three late first quarter. This time they come right. That's going to be a first down for Boston College. Washington with the carry again. Now they really do have a two-headed tailback. They list Washington as the starter, yeah. but uh, William Green over 1,000 yards. And last year, Cedric Washington was the guy who went over 1,000 yards. This year, it's the sophomore William Green. And, and really, it says a lot about Cedric Washington, a senior expecting a huge year this year, but the way he's handled Sharon Time and William Green kind of being the feature guy, playing through injuries, has meant a lot to this football team. Hemmings and Reed split wide left on first down. Play fake, Hasselback. Crossing pattern, Ron Reed. He goes in the corner instead, and it's incomplete. He had Reed coming across the middle and opted to go to Hemmings in the corner. Right now, I'm impressed with the play calling of Dana Bible of Boston College. He's doing a nice job mixing pass and run on first down. The offensive line has established themselves, and they've avoided those long third down situations that play right into the speed of the Miami defense. He's done a nice job keeping Miami off balance to this point. Second down, 10. Hasselback goes from the spread. I think that's offsides on Damian Lewis. He's guessing on the snap count. Certainly what Dan Kopp in the center believes. And an easy five yards for BC. <laughs> Damian Lewis, one of those veteran starters up there. Here he is now. He's just anticipating, and what he did was he saw the center's head go up for the shotgun snap, and he tried to get a quick jump, and he was offside. Last week, a mm. total in the game of 166, and already BC surpasses that mark. On second down, Washington picks up three down to the 27-yard line. Vern, one big difference, and I and I watched that film pretty closely of their game against Syracuse last week. The opening kickoff, there was a huge tackle made by Miami. They came out with fire in their eyes and totally smothered Syracuse in the first quarter, in the first half of that football game. In this ball game, they, they're, they're not completely there, focus-wise. They've turned the ball over. They're giving up plays in the running game. A much different mentality, I think, at the start of this game than there was last week in the Carrier Dome. Third and two, Green and Hutzler in the eye behind Hasselbeck. It'll be Green. Stutter step. Tries to slip inside, and that's going to be short. It'll be fourth down. Nice play by Damian Lewis, getting the penetration and forcing William Green to go sideways. And this is not a defense that you want to go sideways against. You've got to stay north and south against this, these guys. Watch Damian Lewis get the push in the backfield and force William Green to plant and go outside. And once you start going sideways against this defense, you've got problems. Fourth and uh, a short two or a long one. And no indication that they're going to call on Mike Sutton to come out now. He kicked a 48-yarder in their last game on the road, that's Brian St. Pierre and Tim Hasselbeck chatting on the sideline. Well, we have reached the end of one. That's the end of the first quarter with our score 6 3 BC. We'll return to the Orange Bowl after this message and a word from your local station. heading for the locker room, the All-American middle linebacker for Miami, fourth and one. Yeah, five tackles already, and that might have helped make this decision to go for it for Tom O'Brien. Would have been a 43-yard field goal. BC will go for it on fourth and a long one. Play fake. Here goes Hasselback. He's nice. got all kinds of room. Tim Hasselback, first down, Boston College, on a gain of 12. Nice play call again by Dana Bible. 
I'm thinking run. They fake it to William Green, and now it's a run pass option, and Hasselbeck makes the great decision. Two yards, I can make that easy, run in the football, and we keep this scoring drive alive. Well, BC with a first down 10 under Tom O'Brien. They are at the line. Hand off, Green. Nothing doing. Hasselback in his senior season had to miss that game at Notre Dame. You know, he's not been a guy who started his whole career. Really, last year, his first time that he played significant plays. But he has great spirit and leadership, and it's his tenacity and his will to win that has really affected this football team. And that's what makes him a valuable part of this offense. Two tight ends, tight right. Play fake, Hasselbeck sets up. Goes short, intercepted. Picked off, and here comes Howard Clark. Clark breaks a tackle, gets a block. Howard Clark chased down and caught from behind. Intended for Guazzo. Well, just as we were talking about Tim Hasselbeck and his spirit and tenacity, he makes a poor decision on where to throw this football. Trying to get it to his tight end, Guazzo. And there's double coverage there. There's a, a, a defensive, defensive back and also Clark. And a costly turnover now for Boston College. But Miami in great position. 64-yard return. First down 10 after the 64-yard interception. And a flag. Offside, BC. Right now, a sudden change situation for Boston College. They've got to regroup. Their defense has played well so far. And Frank Spaziani knows that his team needs to, to buckle down here and make a couple plays. The offense had been controlling things, and then they made that mistake, and Miami knocking on the door. Najee Davenport in at the fullback now, number four. Play fake Dorsey. Deep in the corner, Santana Moss. Touchdown, Miami. The, the defense gets the turnover, and the offense capitalizes. An excellent throw and catch. Watch the route, the corner route by Moss. He's got the defender in his hip pocket, and then the perfect throw by Dorsey. Out over the outside shoulder to the back pylon. Todd Sievers with the extra point. Cuts it just inside the right upright. The 18th reception for touchdown from Santana Moss. Miami with the lead. With more of the hottest new releases guaranteed, nobody brings home the magic of the movies like Blockbuster. Rent Big Mama's house at Blockbuster this week and keep it 12 hours longer. The mother of all comedies is here. Martin Lawrence, Big Mama's house, rated PG-13. Guaranteed to be there this week at Blockbuster. Blockbuster, bringing entertainment home. What do we want this year? A JPEG of the grandkids would be nice. I want to be a cyber cowboy. I want to check out a chat room. I'm a nut for email. I want to buy my lingerie online. Me too. I want to know what is hip. This year, give your parents the gift they really want. An easy way to stay in touch right from their TV. Web TV from Microsoft. Look for our holiday offer. Her ear isn't ordinary when she's the one you love. To place an extraordinary gift onto it, come to Kay Jewelers. This Christmas, give her Kay's diamond earrings with diamonds hand-selected for exceptional beauty. Every kiss begins with Kay. Kay Jewelers. For every job, there's a hard way, or there's the Dremel way. 
the Dremel Rotary Tool with more than 150 available accessories. For every problem, there's a Dremel solution. A thief is preying on the elderly. He lives with him, bleeds him dry, and then he kills him. Now, Mannion must stop him before he strikes again. The District CBS Tonight. 10 to 6, Miami. One of the things that makes them so effective is their ability to throw out of the eye formation. That is a run set. It holds linebackers. It makes defensive backs relax a little bit. And they throw the ball so well, whether it's play action or drop back, out of the eye formation, a run set makes them that much more explosive. They do score in a hurry. And after the 64-yard interception, Return by Howard Clark. Miami takes the lead. Here's Severs. Ordway, two yards in, will bring it out. Andre Johnson with the tackle. Sunday on 60 Minutes. Remember when traveling by air was a pleasure? <laughs> will it ever be again? Find out on 60 Minutes Sunday. I'll be watching that one. <laughs> Dan Morgan back on the field. He's been in and he's been out. He's been in the locker room. He's been on the sidelines. But he is the heart and soul of this Miami defense. Just like Tim Hasselbeck is the heart and soul of this Boston College offense. And he needs to regroup his team right now. Ryan Reed in motion. Corner blitz coming again. Hasselbeck delivers it. And there is... Mr. Morgan on Ryan Utzler. Dan Morgan, born in Pennsylvania, moved with his family here when he was 13 years old. I think folks in this part of the country know his personal history. His dad is a personal assistant to Dan Marino and his wife, Claire. This kid just oozes spirit for Miami. And Brian St. Pierre has come in at quarterback. Well, this is not because of anything Hasselbeck does. They right. always do this. The the first series of the second quarter is St. Pierre's in this offense. What a pop. Edward Reed, number 20. Ouch. And I remember the last game we did of Boston College when St. Pierre came in against Virginia Tech. It was at a critical time in the game where the momentum was shifting. Same kind of situation right now. Miami's defense starting to play downhill against the Eagles a little bit. They're pressuring, they're blitzing, they're closing down on this Eagle offense. And again, third and long plays right into the hands of the Miami Hurricanes. They need eight. Quick setup, overthrown, intended for Diedrich DeWalt. Philip Buchanan was the defender. It'll be fourth down. Crowd applauds the effort of this Miami defense. My, how quickly things change. BC in control, going in. An outstanding run by Hasselback on fourth down and one, and then the interception by Howard Clark. Returned 64 yards. It set up a touchdown to Santana Moss. Here is Moss at the 41. He's got some room. Thirteen yards on the return for Santana Moss. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot College football will continue after this word from your local station. Shag, Tuesdays on CBS. It's all here. Well, the baby is looking healthy. How are you two doing? We're great. Just doing the parenthood thing, you know, mm -hmm. buying a minivan. Oh. Oh. He's kicking. Mm hmm. Mm. What minivan? The Odyssey? Mm hmm. Nice. Very nice. With a fold down third row seat for family sized cargo and a five star safety rating, it's beyond a minivan. The Odyssey from Honda. Today in Florida, half a million people went to the doctor. In Jacksonville, a little girl had her hearing tested. A woman in Tampa learned she was pregnant. And in Miami, a father got some good news about his cholesterol. And even though it was a day of half a million reasons to worry, it was a good day. Because the last thing on half a million minds was health plans, which is exactly the way it should be. 
Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Florida. The best health plan is the one you don't have to think about. Announcing the Dare to Compare Mercury Sales Event. Check out the 2001 Mercury Grand Marquis GS, over 2,500 less than Buick LeSabre Custom SE. Grand Marquis features rear-wheel drive and the only V8 engine in its full-size class, plus the largest trunk in its class. During this special offer, get a 24-month lease on a Grand Marquis with one easy payment of only $99.99. We dare you to get the details at your Florida Mercury dealer today. Sports Jam with Ryan Baker, Sunday night after the night beat. Tuesday on CBS, everyone thinks this admiral is guilty of war crimes. To prove his innocence, he has to go up against the Navy's top brass. Don't miss an all-new episode of JAG Tuesday on CBS. Early second quarter, Miami leading Boston College 10-6 with the ball. At the 47-yard line. Dorsey to throw on first down. Good protection deep down the middle. Jeremy Shockey, the tight end. In his first year, the transfer from Northeastern Junior College in Oklahoma. Miami, Oklahoma, that would be. <laughs> and what a star he has become for Miami. But uh, BC seemingly in control of this thing until that one bad pass from Hasselbeck. Yeah, what's our colleague who does college basketball, Clark Kellogg, talk about spurtability? <laughs> well, Miami football has spurtability, and we're seeing it right now. That big play to Shockey. This is a team that just has so many weapons, and they're so explosive. They can make big plays at any moment. Draw play. Clinton Portis, who is uh, the curveball to James Jackson's fastball, comes in. And it'll be second down and seven. Second down and seven. to go first half quick flip Santana Moss quick spin Lenny Walls is there to make the tackle time now for the Exxon virtual playbook well I've called it this week the hidden hurricane because Jeremy Shockey who just made that huge catch kind of gets lost in the shuffle you, you pay so much attention to Wayne and Moss on the outside the backs in the backfield and the tight end Shockey has become a huge weapon and has made this offense that much more versatile huge touchdown catch against Virginia Tech he's too much to handle for most linebackers or defensive backs and gets better and better each game. First down, 10, backs in the eye. Portis gets it. Glenn Portis, who missed three games with a foot injury, but really gaudy statistics for limited playing time. And he is a guy who, when the lights go on in the stadium on Saturdays, he makes plays. Talk about the playmakers this team has, but you see what he has done. Only 12 games it took him to to surpass a thousand yards. Second down and ten. Or nine, make it. Portis coming right. Tackled as he gets to the five yard line. Stop made by Ralph Perrin. Number 24, 9.40 to go, first half. Very big play right now for Frank Spaziani's defense. This is a huge play on third down and four for Boston College. They need to force Miami to settle for a field goal and slow the momentum a little bit. Reggie Wayne, Andre King, and Santana Moss are the wide receivers. Shockey, the tight end, he is tight right. Dorsey drills it. Shockey. Touchdown, Miami. Little combination.
option route with the wide receiver, a slant by the receiver, an arrow route by the tight end, and a quick read by Kenny Dorsey. Here's Shockey, he's just running a flat arrow route. Dorsey reads it, they doubled up on the slant, get it to the tight end, and then he carries Josh Ott into the end zone. Stevers with the extra point, it is up and good. Jeremy Shockey with his third touchdown catch of the season. This guy has made this already explosive Miami offense even better because he opens up the middle of the field for everything else they do. In New York, and coming up on the AXA Halftime Report, Spencer Tillman and I will get you caught up on all of today's scores and highlights, including Oklahoma's bid to remain number one, padded by J.T. Thatcher's eighth interception of the year en route to Oklahoma's lead over Oklahoma State. Now back to B.C. Miami. Well, cruise ships coming and going out of the port of Miami on this uh, Thanksgiving weekend afternoon. Live above the Orange Bowl today, the Budweiser.com airship. The aerial ambassador of the King of Beers providing those pictures. And your wife, Nancy, liked those cruises, don't she? She loves them. I'm just sitting here thinking, Todd, <laughs> we've got dear friends of ours, Ken and Joe Tripp, who've been in the cruise business all of their lives. Now living in Vero Beach, and Kenny is battling an illness, and uh, we've been thinking about him all weekend. Here comes the return, Ortley. Thirty-eight yard return. Much needed. Let's check in with Jill Aaron. Well, Dan Morgan, Vern, was still being bothered by that turf toe injury. He came out of the game, and the trainers took him in the locker room and rewrapped the whole foot. They added this gel foam padding to the foot to try to relieve some of the pain because turf toe is one of the most painful, nagging injuries that you can have. Ed Reed came out of the game because he sprained his ankle a little bit on that interception. They came out, but they both were back in on that possession, and they stopped them. They know how important they are on their defense. Mentally and physically tough individuals. Comes the blitz from the corner and the first down to the 39-yard line. Jamal Green stops William Green. You know, I mentioned last week that Morgan went out, got x-rays, got his foot retaped, wanted to play barefoot. Of course, they wouldn't let him do that, but he finished the game with a shoe that was a half a size smaller than his regular shoe because it felt better having it tightly wrapped. I wouldn't be surprised if he's got a smaller shoe on again right now, but this is one tough, tough individual. Second down. Green stopped. Chris Campbell. Dan Morgan is a finalist for two of the prestigious postseason awards. The Bronco Nagurski Award is the Defensive Player of the Year, and the Butkus Award, a finalist for the Outstanding Linebacker of the Year 2000. He's got great speed, he's got great instincts, and he loves to play the game. It's a nice combination for a linebacker. Third and eight, Boston College looking for its first conversion. Deep right side, man coverage. Puts it up, Jamal Burke cannot make the catch. Marquise Fitzgerald was the defender, number 27. Not a bad idea by Tim Hasselbeck. You've got single coverage, throw the ball high and let Burke try to make a play. Normally receivers have the advantage in this kind of a situation going after the football. Burke just not able to get both hands on the ball. Marquise Fitzgerald in good position, but Burke had a chance. McMiler on the punt for the fourth time. They come after it. That's going to be a penalty against Miami. And I think that one's going to be 15 yards, too. That's not running into the kicker. That's going to be roughing the kicker and a first down. Aaron Mosier, number 26, is the man who made contact. Edward Reed already has begun the process of pleading Miami's case. Right up the middle, Mosier, he runs a little stunt, and he's going to get in there pretty clean, but he goes right to the kicker instead of the football. Ed Reed is the guy who made the contact. Mosier actually missed the punter, but Ed Reed laid him out. And that is a huge break for Boston College. This game starting to slip away from him here in the second quarter. The momentum really shifting to the Miami Hurricanes. And now Boston College with a new offensive series out by midfield. 
Butch Davis was arguing, Vern, that the ball was tipped. He thought there was a deflection on the kick, which would have eliminated the penalty. The referee did not see any deflection on the football. 15-yard penalty marked off against Miami. That results in a first down at the 46. Hand off, Washington. He struggles inside the 45. Well, this has been an offense. The reason they go for the block is because they've had such great success on special teams. For example, Santana Moss has three punt returns for TDs. Miami with two fumble recoveries for touchdowns and six interceptions for touchdowns this year. Throw in a safety, and they've done very, very well. Ball is slipped on the left side. It's Washington who runs into Dan Morgan at the 38-yard line. Miami with 11 special teams and defensive touchdowns. Well, they have so much speed, Vern, on the defensive side of the ball that when they do get a loose football, and they've got guys that can advance it to the end zone in a hurry. That's a Boston College player down at the 41-yard line. This is a very important part of the game for Boston College. They got the gift penalty on the roughing the punter. There's six minutes and 49 seconds left in the half. I think they need to not only score here, but they need to eat up a bunch of clock while they're doing it. That's Tim Hasselback with Brian St. Pierre. The interesting philosophy that Tom O'Brien uses with Dana Bible about always yep. bringing St. Pierre, the backup quarterback, for the opening series of the second quarter. Yeah, and a couple times we've seen it, it seemed like a real inopportune time for it to happen, but that's what they've done consistently. And the flip side, the positive side of that, is when St. Pierre had to start against Notre Dame two weeks ago because of the injury to Hasselbeck, he had already had 160 snaps of offense before that starting assignment, so he was ready to take over and play. There's the injured player, Paul LeCare, walks unassisted to the sidelines, but uh, in some pain, as you can tell. Now, Utzler, the fullback, splits wide to the right side on third down at the 39-yard line. Hasselback, shovel pass, drop, incomplete. Washington. It'll be fourth down. This is kind of an option for Hasselbeck. He can either run it or go with the shovel pass. It's kind of a version of the option. And you see the closing speed and the recoverability of the Miami defense. It looks like it's open for a moment and then a lot of orange shirts right there led by 44, Dan Morgan. On fourth down, McMiler back to punt. Santana Moss perched at the 10-yard line. Not touchback. Not good. Nope. 622 to go first half. Hurricanes have the lead. Interactive on Web TV. Get an in-depth experience of the game with stats, news, history, and more through Web TV. Final home game of the season for the Miami Hurricanes. They are 9-1. and one. Their one loss on the road to the University of Washington. They lead it here 17-6, and Dorsey will throw on first down. Right side, Santana Moss. Jonathan Ordway is out there, number 28. Make the tackle. Now time for your favorite part of the broadcast. The Aflac trivia question. Yesterday, LaDainian Tomlinson became the eighth player in NCAA history to rush for over 2,000 yards. Who are the other seven players? Terry, real congratulations to LT also because uh, TCU, a great season, and uh, that is not an easy thing to do, run for over 2,000 yards. What a victory for TCU last night over SMU, 62 to 7. Here comes the blitz by Boston College. Dorsey, deep right. Santana Moss, it's overthrown. Lenny Walls was defending. First time Boston College has gone after Ken Dorsey and blitzed him. As you take a look at Santana Moss, the all-time all-purpose yards record holder at Miami, and he 
gets it done so many ways as a receiver, a punt returner, five career punt returns for touchdowns, runs the reverse as we saw their first offensive play of the game. Here's the handoff. Jackson across the 50, first down at the 48-yard line. Gain of 17. Excellent vision this time by James Jackson. This play is designed to go over the left side, but watch the cutback by James Jackson. Sees it's not there. He cuts back, has a nice block by his right tackle, Gonzalez, but that's vision by James Jackson to see the cutback lane open and take advantage of it. Daryl Jones and Andre King are on the field now. Wind up to the left side. Jones in motion. Jackson again. You know, Vern, I, I made a comment to you when we were in break that that exchange on third and fourth down when Boston College had the football was really going to hurt them because they had a, a third and four on the 39. They don't convert. And then they decide, okay, let's punt, put them, pin Miami back deep. They get the bad punt that gives Miami the ball in the 20-yard line. And now Miami across the 50 with four minutes and 50 seconds left in the half and a chance to score again and really take control of this football game. Looking at second down and four. Another blitz. Quick setup, pass complete. Andre King, the senior from Fort Lauderdale. King, a one-time baseball player here at Miami, walked onto this team a couple of years ago. Didn't think he was going to get a chance to play much. So he scheduled his wedding day for November 29th, 1997. All of a sudden, the Hurricanes become depleted with injuries. Andre King scheduled to play that day. He missed the game to get married. I think uh, wise choice. <laughs> First down. Dorsey got a man deep. Santana Morris. But the man who was open was Reggie White. You're right. He went for Moss, and Ordway showed a little catch-up speed there to get in position to be a distraction. But Reggie Wayne was open. Here are the two receivers. Now they're both going to run across the field. And Dorsey's going to go for Moss. He's beat right there, but Ordway shows great catch-up speed to get in the way of this throw. Reggie Wayne was open in the end zone, and Ordway, there is no such thing as face guarding in college football, and is able to catch up and make a play. Second down, 10. Blitz. Good pickup. Pass incomplete. Flag is down. Looks like holding the where it was thrown. Frank Spaziani calling more blitzes at this point in the game. The third one now, and all have come here late in the first half. They got Greg LaFair, the left guard, with the hold. Tom O'Brien now with the decision, do we make it third and 10 or do we push him back second and long? Against the offense, 10 yards and sets in the previous spot remains second down. Boston College dominated the first quarter in uh, three or four minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, Miami has started to play downhill, and I think the biggest thing is is that on both sides of the ball, they have regained their focus. They did not start this game with a good focus, but they've got it back now. Second down at 19. Dorsey with a lot of time, crossing pattern. Andre King. Great job up front, Vern. Five guys blocking on four. Dorsey had all kind of time 
Again, he's only been sacked eight times this season, and they throw the ball a lot. Watch this offensive line just give a nice, nice pocket for Dorsey. He's got time to step up and to wait and allow this in route to clear behind the linebacker. Second down and 20, no problem with that kind of pass protection. A gain of 23, first down. Reggie Wayne, Ordway with a tackle. And Wayne is out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Pretty soon now, they've thrown enough quick hitches and little quick outs that they're going to go uh, hitch and go. And, and, and they're going to get Boston College biting on that out fake. And this is a, a real challenge with guys like Santana Moss and Reggie Wayne and Andre King. You throw those short passes, and if they can break one tackle, they turn a five-yard completion into a big play. The inside man as they come to the right side. Wayne outside. Second down and two. Jackson, first and goal. Jackson. Ramon Johnson makes the tackle. James Jackson gets the first down. Again, division. And then the footwork by James Jackson. It's not there inside. He follows his block by his fullback, DJ Williams, and gets outside and gets the first down. Miami has a player down. It's uh, Joaquin Gonzalez, the academic All-American at right tackle. This guy has uh, been a great player. He came here as a walk-on, came on an academic scholarship, could have gone to the Ivy League, and has started every game since his redshirt freshman year. One of the real anchors on this outstanding Miami offensive line. Here he is right here, blocking his man down and, and a little collision on his backside. Grew up in the Miami area as a Hurricane fan. Was telling us a month or so ago about uh, watching on television as a boy dreaming of playing for this team and was one of those who opted to come here when things were not going well at this school in his junior season. First and goal, Hurricanes. Jackson test the middle. Second down. On the AXA halftime report, we'll go back to New York. Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman scores and highlights, and they'll uh, put you all on the coaching carousel. I rather enjoyed Spencer's uh, dissertation mm. on, the, on the possibilities for the Bowl Championship Series. He was running out of uh, <laughs> maneuvering room. Watch Shockey again right here at the tight end. King starts in motion. Quick flip in the corner, Santana Moss. Wow. That's uh, Reggie Wayne, I beg your pardon. Reggie Wayne. Wow. Burn. Jonathan Ordway was all over this play. I mean, he read it, he knew it was coming, he had his eyes on the football, and Reggie Wayne just went up and beat him for the football. Look at Ordway's eyes. He knows the fate's coming. Here comes the ball. He's in position, but watch Wayne just go up and fight him for the football. And Tom O'Brien knows we had a chance to score and to go into halftime okay. Sievers cuts it just inside the left upright. A gorgeous catch by Reggie Wayne. That's number five today, 24-6. What do we want this year? A JPEG of the grandkids would be nice. I want to be a cyber cowboy. I want to check out a chat room. I'm a nut for email. I want to buy my lingerie online. Me too. I want to know what is hip. This year, give your parents the gift they really want. An easy way to stay in touch right from their TV. Web TV from Microsoft. Look for our holiday offer. What kind of a company are we? We're a small town banker helping a farmer. A capitalist on Wall Street, growing companies. A financial advisor, planning a future. 
you'll find us from Florida to Silicon Valley to Singapore, and just down the street from your home. We're First Union, one of America's largest and best financial institutions, helping our neighbors in every way we can. NFL Today checks out Tampa Bay's topsy-turvy season and the recent rise of the Ravens. All that and more Sunday on CBS. 24-6, 2 2 to go, first half of play. Before a less than full house at the Orange Bowl, the Eagles struggling. You see what Reggie Wayne has meant to Ken Dorsey when it comes to throwing touchdowns. A real comfort level there with the senior wide receiver out of Louisiana. Seavers with the kickoff short. Almost a pooch kick taken at the 26 yard line. J.D. Schmidt with the return. And let's take another look at the Reggie Wayne catch. Well, Vern, I already made one reference to basketball. Here's another one. All this is is going up for a rebound, and it's 6-1 Reggie Wayne against 5-10 Jonathan Ordway, and Wayne with the better position and then the better jump. It, it, was, it was up for grabs. Both guys in position. Reggie Wayne came down with the football. 80 yards in 11 plays. All of that followed an unsuccessful third and four play at the 39. Here's the handoff to Green. Barrels up across the 35 to the 38, and it is time now for the answer to the Affleck. Uh, thank you. I, <laughs> timing is wrong. Yesterday, Ladanian Tomlinson became the eighth player in NCAA history, over 2,000 yards. We'll get the others in just a second. Here's the toss over the middle to Diedrich DeWalt. And if you got four of these right, okay. you did pretty good, because this is not an easy one. And you take a look at the names on this list. Troy Davis did it twice. That's pretty impressive. Sanders, Allen, Rozier, Ricky Williams, Hans Bart of Texas Tech, and Rashawn Salam from Colorado. First down and 10. Blitz. Damian Lewis was right in the face of Hasselbeck. And Jamal Burke did not see the blitz. Normally, you want to make a sight adjustment between quarterback and wide receiver, and Tim Hasselbeck made the adjustment, but Jamal Burke did not. Another fine first half for Ken Dorsey. A costly interception by Tim Hasselbeck kind of started to change the tide in this football game from a, a momentum standpoint. Second and 10, but it's coming again. William Green runs into Dan Morgan. Now, you just can't say enough good things about Dan Morgan. I mean, this guy is playing hurt, and he's out there playing like a madman. Eight tackles in the first half on a bad foot right there to stuff William Green. And he has had such an effect on this team because of his toughness. Third and seven. That one incomplete. You can, in fact, to defend on Keith Hemmings. Fourth down. Damian Lewis is beginning to assert himself as well. I mean, you're talking about two guys, Dan Morgan and Damian Lewis, who have both started over 40 games in their career. Morgan's making the tackles, and Damian Lewis is creating the pressure. A great, quick first step, and he's in the quarterback's lap. On fourth down, here is McMyler. Nice and high, and Moss will let this one go. Again, results in the touchback. So with 43 seconds to go in the first half of play, Miami gets it back. Next week, Saturday, we are lucky enough to go into Baltimore for the annual meeting between Army and Navy. One of the truly uh, outstanding spectacles in all of college sports. Yeah, you'll love that, partner. I'll tell you, it's... Uh... You know, it's a different game. It doesn't have national championship implications by any stretch, but it is an event unlike any other and, and one of the great matchups and traditions in all of college football. 
First and 10, Miami, with 43 seconds to go. Three touchdown tosses already for Ken Dorsey. They'll give it off to Jackson. Or it's Portis. Breaks the tackle, and Clinton Portis out to the 28-yard line. You know, Vern, last week, up in the Carrier Dome, Miami established themselves early. They had the big lead at halftime, and they went on to post a 26 to nothing win and, and really didn't do too much after that, didn't feel like they needed to. Today, when they come out of the locker room in the second half, I would expect Miami to keep playing hard and keep going with some of their regulars to win as impressively as they can. It's unfortunate that it's come down to that, but for Miami, that is a factor here today. On second down, Dorsey goes deep for King. Lenny Walls was back there defending. Good coverage by Walls, the pass incomplete. Final play of the first half. And let's check in with Jill Arrington. Coach Davis, Boston College came out fighting hard. Your team has responded. Has anything surprised you about the way Boston College came out playing? Not at all, Jill. They're uh, they're really a good football team. They're well coached. We knew that they were an outstanding offense, over 400 yards. They got a great running attack, excellent running backs, big offensive line. We had to make some adjustments. They had two weeks to get ready. They threw a couple of curveballs. It took it took some chalk on the sidelines to kind of get a little bit of tweak into the, some of the defensive scheme. But I hopefully maybe we found exactly what we want to do the second half. All right, coach. Thanks a lot. Good luck. Thank you, Jill. Our score at halftime, Miami 24, Boston College 6. Now let's go back to New York with Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman. The Hurricanes leading Boston College 24-6. And a reminder that Hoops begins next week. The NCAA college basketball season premiere. 22nd ranked Kentucky goes into North Carolina next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern time. In football here, it's been Ken Dorsey and the Hurricanes who jumped out to a 24-6 lead, Todd. Well, we said Ken Dorsey was the leader of Butch's Bunch. Three touchdowns in the first half. He threw one long to Santana Moss. One short to his tight end, Jeremy Shockey. And then at the end, one to his favorite target, Reggie Wayne, where he just threw it up and said, big fella, go get it. Three touchdown passes and a comfortable 24 to six lead for the Hurricanes. Back at the Orange Bowl, 24-6 as we get set for the start of quarter number three. Darrell Jones grabs the kickoff and comes left. And he is down at the 23-yard line, first down and 10. Miami, which uh, arose from a 6-0 deficit after an interception by Howard Clark. Clark <laughs> went on and now lead 24 to 6. How do they approach the second half? Well, I think Miami is going to play to really be impressive here in the second half, particularly the third quarter. And, and I don't think that's going to be any surprise to anybody. Tom O'Brien, well aware of the situation. He was in a similar situation last year, the last game going into Blacksburg to play Virginia Tech. This is a huge game for Miami, and this is going to be an important third quarter for them. They fake the reverse. And the ball given to James Jackson on first down and 10. And just a moment ago, down on the sidelines, Jill Arrington with Tom O'Brien. Coach O'Brien, you knew what you were up against. Your team came out playing hard. What do you got to do to get back in this game? We have to do what we do best. We have to try to run the football again, control the clock, make third down conversions. Then we can't give up the big passes. We've been in position. They've just made plays. They're good. All right, Coach, good luck to you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Jill. Second down and four. You know, Butch Davis, I think, has really taken the high road here the last couple weeks in terms of, you know, not wanting to run up the score and wanting to be a gentleman and, and doing all those things. And, you know, unfortunately, some of the computer rankings are affected by margin of victory. And this is a situation where I don't think he's going to try to bury Tom O'Brien or, or embarrass the Boston College football team, but this is their last opportunity to make a statement to everybody that's involved in the BCS. That's why I think particularly particularly in the third quarter, they're going to try to score as many points as they can and keep the pedal to the metal. Second down and four backs in the eye. Jackson dances to the outside, switches hands, shoulder down, first down. Miami at the 38, a gain of nine. Well, it is a really complicated, difficult-to-understand formula. Essentially, this is it. 
The rating is based on the average of both national polls, the average of eight computer rankings, perhaps the most uh, ar ardently discussed uh, example of this, the schedule strength and the overall record. And the team with the lowest rating is ranked number one, currently Oklahoma. And just in case people are not familiar with, the, the expressed intent of the BCS is to match the top two teams in what this year would be the national championship game, the Orange Bowl, here in Miami. Second and six. Well, it's worked well the first two years. Yep. And it's gone down to the wire. The last two weeks of the season, it, it, it became clear the last two years. This year, I'm not so sure it's going to be as clear cut. Nice defensive play. Nice play by Doug Goodwin. Doug Goodwin, number 61. I'm impressed with this young freshman. He's from Freeport, New York. He's had to play a lot more than they probably expected him to this year because of injuries on the front front on the defensive front. But Doug Goodwin has really played well. This is his sixth start of the season that he's made this year and four tackles here against the Hurricanes. Loss of two, third and eight. They really have not been able to generate much of any kind of pressure on Ken Dorsey. He has not been hurried at all today. BC stunts the pass through the hands of Ivan Mercer. It'll be fourth down, and Miami will be forced to punt. I'm going to go back and talk a little bit about the Bowl Championship Series current standings. Oklahoma, Florida State is number two. Miami third and the difference in those two schools are the computer rankings right now recall that among the victories this season for Miami was a win here over Florida State and then there's a case of Washington which says mm -hmm. wait a minute we defeated Miami and they are a one loss team nice and high by Freddie Capshaw fair catch taken at the 11 yard line by Diedrich DeWalt that is a 50 yard punt Nothing on the return. Underway in the third quarter. Miami leads BC 24-6. This week in Suzuki Heisman Highlights. This year's MVP has got to be the V6 Grand Vitara by Team Suzuki. Check out this play. With his V6 quad cam engine and ladder box frame, he tackles that mountain like it was an anthill. That's power. With that kind of season, it's no wonder the Grand Vitara has been named the official automobile of the Heisman Trophy. Now at your Suzuki dealer, vote for the Heisman candidate of your choice. Enter to win a V6 Grand Vitara and other great Suzuki products. He's a powerful man, a rich man, a single man. But fate... Probably gonna want to buckle up, Jack. ...is about to show him the man he could have been. Come on, Dad, get up! What's happening to me? This is a glimpse. How did I get here? This isn't my house. Ugh. You're not my wife. What? Nicholas Cage. I'm not a dad. Oh. The Family Man. I'm in the middle of a deal. Well, you're working on a new deal now, baby. Rated PG-13 at theaters December 22nd. This is not a photo. It's a digital image. And this is not a photo. It's a computer image. It's not a photo until you print it on jet print photo paper. So you print this on your inkjet printer? Whether you get images from a digital camera, scanner, photo CD, or email, Jet Print Photo lets you print studio quality pictures at home. When you can get the look and feel of professional photos, why settle for anything less? Jet Print Photo, how digital photos are finished. Want to start a family? Right now? I just got supplemental insurance. What's that? Half flat. Well, if we get sick, our health insurance won't cover things like lost pay <clears throat> or other expenses. <laughs> this does. What's it called? Aflac! I don't know. <laughs> Aflac! Aflac! Without it, no insurance is complete. They fight for truth and justice. Texas Rangers! But CBS tonight, one of these Rangers will fall. An all-new Walker CBS tonight. 
Budweiser and the Budweiser.com airship proud to provide you with these beautiful live shots from 1,000 feet above the Orange Bowl. 24-6, Miami. Hasselback, the quarterback for Boston College. Give it off to Cedric Washington, and we go down to Jill Arrington. Thanks, Vern. Like Todd was saying, one year ago, Boston College found itself in an almost identical situation to today. Already bowl bound, they had to travel to Virginia Tech on Thanksgiving weekend as Virginia Tech tried to cement itself a position in the championship game. Michael Vick Bears Boston College. The Eagles fell 38 to 14. They had to watch as the Hokies celebrated their win. They even pulled down the goalposts. Earlier this week, I asked Boston College head coach what they learned from last year's experience. They said they learned they better come out ready to play or else they're going to be embarrassed and they don't want to be embarrassed again. So, Vern, they're playing for pride right now. All right, Jill, thank you. Diedrich DeWald out of the backfield. He gets the pass for a 20-yard game and a first down Boston College at the 36. You know, and I think Tom O'Brien made a, a good point there at halftime when he said that, you know, we've been in position. But these guys are good. They've made plays. And, and again, last year against Virginia Tech and this year, the biggest difference between the teams is just overall speed. Too much speed for Miami. Washington nailed Dan Morgan again. What a game he's having. You know, the, the rest of this defense feeds off of Dan Morgan. He's played hurt. He's had nine tackles today on a bad foot. And when we were talking to Greg Schiano, he was saying about Dan Morgan, he says a lot of guys come into the meetings and they know how banged up he is. And they said, if Dan Morgan can play this hard, being this hurt, then so can I. And without even doing anything, he has an effect. Test the middle again. That's where Morgan lives. He backs out of the way and gives way to Damian Lewis, number 92. Let's go back and uh, check this out statistically at the half. Well, I think the biggest thing that stands out to me is right here, Miami. We talked about the explosive offense, 321 yards in one half of football. And then over here, BC, 0 for 6 on third down. When you get into those unmanageable third down situations like this right here, third and 10, Miami is really, really tough. Watch Miami come. Hasselback in a hurry. Incomplete at the 30. Damian Lewis led the charge, and they held a congregational meeting <laughs> at Tim Hasselback's arm. The key here is try to bring more people than BC can block. They draw some blocks, they get some men free, and Tim Hasselbeck just has to unload it to avoid the sack. That brings on Kevin McMyler and Santana Moss awaits the punt at the 24. High snap. Miami ball at the 21. Myler had to get on the trampoline and jump up for it. Yeah, this is not the fault of the punter McMyler. He tried to get it and then just was not able. Again, the speed and the recoverability of Miami. On fourth down, first down. And Reggie Wayne heads wide right. Right to the end zone. Yep. <laughs> Dorsey. Out of bounds at the 14-yard line. So impressed with the poise of Ken Dorsey. He has gotten better and better. He struggled a little bit in the Washington game, lost his poise a little bit in that game, played well in the second half, and now just continues to improve. And when you got guys like this to throw it to, Santana Moss and Reggie Wayne, makes it a little easier to play quarterback. And you get protection like he's gotten today from that offensive line. Moss left, Wayne right. Dorsey, Jackson, a couple of yards on second down. That will bring up third and one as Keith Levitt, number 64, made the tackle. Now, I made the comment at the start of the telecast that I think Miami is the best offensive football team in the country. And I know there's probably some people north of here in Tallahassee that would argue and some out in Norman, Oklahoma that would argue. But the reason that I think this offense is the best is because they've got that balance of being able to run and be physical 
with James Jackson, and also they've got the ability to throw the ball all over the field, and they've got weapons everywhere. They are equally balanced as a running and a passing team. Third and two, eye formation, and they will throw out of the eye. Dorsey, good protection. Moss, touchdown, Miami. For the second time today, they pick on Willie Poole. Santana Moss, nearly impossible to cover man-to-man, -man. and when the quarterback throws it perfectly, you have no chance. Willie Poole made a play for the football, but the football in perfect position where only Moss can make the catch. Sievers with the extra point, hammers it home. Didn't take long, did it? It starts up front, Vern. Protection is there. Dorsey has clean sight lines to his receiver. And the Hurricanes have another touchdown. 10 Fred is a file on your computer. He's a thesis you've worked on for two years. You're very proud of Fred. No! Whoa! A computer virus has struck. There goes Fred. Darn. <laughs> Look, it's the backup copy of Fred you saved on an iOmega zip disk. Welcome back, Fred. Zip it. Zip it. The automotive world is hyped for the V6 Grand Vitara from Suzuki. Open Road says it's eye-popping. It's much fun to drive off-road as it is on. Automobile magazine raves there's more sport in this sport utility. And Road and Track says it's powerful enough to kick sand in the face of every other four-door in its class. So come into your nearest Suzuki dealer and see for yourself why Motor Trend says the Suzuki V6 Grand Vitara must be on your shopping list. The Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by Exxon, iOmega, Wrangler, and by Suzuki. 9.32 to go, third quarter. This quick striking Miami team does so again. They score in three plays, took all of 52 seconds. Ken Dorsey has tied his career high with his fourth touchdown toss. I think Clark, Clark will be mad for me using his words, spurtability. No, 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 no. He appreciates any mention <laughs> you can give him. I think Bill Raftery's upset that you chose his word, big fella. <laughs> Flag is down back inside the 10. So is Ordway at the 17. Ordway, return to football. That will be against Boston College. Check this out. When they score 30 points, they've not lost since the Fiesta Bowl to UCLA in 1985. And they are in command here. Old CBS colleague Terry Donahue was the coach of that UCLA team. Defensive unit trying to get the crowd aroused. Soak up some enthusiasm from this rather small gathering of fans here on Thanksgiving weekend. I think they want a touchdown, too. They've, they've had that streak going this season of scoring on defense, and they've got BC right where they want them right now. Hassel back from the end zone. Almost picked off by Edward Reed, who has eight interceptions this year. He has eight. He's returned two for touchdowns, and he saw the end zone on that one. 
I mean, the, the Miami defense is playing downhill. They're squatting on the routes. They're not playing deep. And Ed Reed, with a nice break to the football, just not able to make the catch. Second down and 10. William Green. Well, only two will make it to the Orange Bowl championship game. Current standings, Oklahoma, Florida State, Miami, and Washington. That's the respective BCA rank, uh, ranking, BCS ranking on line two. The strength of schedule favors Florida State. Miami's currently fifth and Washington eighth. Miami loses big to Florida State in the computer ranking despite the fact that they won here against Florida State. On third down. Incomplete. Edward Reed again. <laughs> this is Katie barred the door right here, man. I'm telling you what. Miami smells blood, and they're bringing it. And Tim Hasselback is lucky he didn't get implanted into the goalpost on this one, just trying to get rid of the football. Made a nice throw under duress, but Robert Ellis not able to come up with the catch. McMiler has to uh, check his heel now, make sure he's not on the end line. Here's the snap back. This one's good, but it's off the side of his foot. Moss will let it bounce. It does and goes out of bounds at the 41-yard line. A 38-yard punt. Hurricanes have the ball with 8.23 to go in the third. Suzuki Heisman highlights. This year's MVP has got to be the V6 Grand Vitara by Team Suzuki. Check out this play. With his V6 quad cam engine and ladder box frame, he tackles that mountain like it was an anthill. That's power. With that kind of season, it's no wonder the Grand Vitara has been named the official automobile of the Heisman Trophy. Now at your Suzuki dealer, vote for the Heisman candidate of your choice. Enter to win a V6 Grand Vitara and other great Suzuki products. And now a look at this week's Suzuki Heisman Watch Update. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman in New York. He hasn't lost a game yet. yet. He could very well win the Heisman. Oklahoma's Josh Hype. Well, he's only Oklahoma's all-time offensive producer in just two seasons. Hadn't had the eye-popping numbers the last two weeks, Tim. I'll give you that. But he's still got to be considered a front-runner up there with Chris Winkie. Now, the interceptions today a little bit disturbing, but he has the last stage of the Big 12 championship game. Yes, he does. And right now, I, uh, I must tell you, I have my ballot, Josh, but haven't filled it out yet. For more information on the Suzuki Heisman Watch, log on to cbs.sportsline.com. <laughs> All right, Tim, thank you. Tim and Spencer, 31-6 here, 8.23 to go. I think Tim's smart for doing that. About this computer system. We'll give you some more numbers here before, uh, before we go off the air. You'll have enough uh, BCS information to uh, eat leftover turkey with later on tonight. Yes, but I bet you still won't understand it. Santana Moss, wide right. Reggie Wayne, wide left, eye formation again, and Portis is the running back. Play fake, Dorsey. He's thrown for four, goes for five. Intercepted. Nice play. Lenny Walls has been probably the most surprising player on this Boston College defense. By number nine. He was an outside linebacker, nickelback in junior college, but he has been an excellent corner this year for Boston College. That's his sixth interception on the season, which leads this Boston College team. Only the fifth interception of the season for Ken Dorsey. 
And the first since the Louisiana Tech win. Lenny Walls, the junior. And good news and bad news for BC. The good news is you got the ball. The bad news is you're on your own three. Washington, no. Howard Clark, number 45, made the tackle. Well, we mentioned that there are eight computer rankings used in the BCS breakdown. And this is the real interesting thing, if you're a Miami fan or a Florida State fan, is that Florida State and Oklahoma are split on the computer. That's why Florida State is ahead of Miami in the BCS. They've got actually four first place votes in for the computer. Second down and nine. Incomplete from the end zone. It'll be third down. You know, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, we were here for the Virginia Tech game. You look at these computer rankings. David Hyde, who is a columnist for the Sun Sentinel, in the aftermath of Miami's win over Virginia Tech, tried to contact representatives of all eight computers. He got hold of three of the people who run the computer systems, three out of eight. None of the three had watched that game on television. None of the three had watched any college game this year. It's information in, information out. And that's a serious flaw in the system. And certain games a lot more important than others. Puck fake, deep left side, man coverage. Ryan Reed with the adjustment, but he can't make the catch. Mm. Boy, they needed that. They had good protection. They stopped the pressure. A nice pump fake, and the ball is put in position where Reed has a chance. You see Rump bit on the fake. Doesn't know where the ball is, and Reed times his jump perfectly, but can't come down with the football, and now BC has to punt deep out of their own end zone again. Ryan Birch is the long snapper, the middle linebacker. He sailed one high two possessions ago. This one good. Santana Moss grabs it at the 41. And gets to the 29, a 12-yard return. He has 25 yards in returns today, and this is significant only in a small context. If he gets 71 yards in punt returns today, he wipes out a record that was set by a Miami Hurricane from 1936 to 1938. It's gotta be the oldest record in the books, the record held by Eddie Dunn of 1,153 yards. I just found that amazing <laughs> that a record that was set before my birth is still in the record book. The toss, Jackson. 25-yard line, Lenny Walls with the tackle. Let's get another update from Tim on Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Vernon, Todd, because of that graphic you showed earlier on the computer ratings for Miami, where Oklahoma's concerned, it's win big or lose to Oklahoma State. Here's Tatum Bell making it 12-7, as we showed you earlier, a 60-yard run. So Miami fans can think of that as either good or bad news for them, Vern. Hmm. All right, Tim, second down here. Hand off, Jackson. You know, Vern, I, I want to make one more point about these computer ranks, and I, the last thing I am is a uh, computer guru. I can't hardly work my own at home. My five-year-old's a little better on it than I am, but prior to the Florida-Florida State game last week, Florida State was ranked either number two or lower in all eight computer rankings, but because of their big win against Florida and a team well-respected like the Florida Gators, they vaulted that high in the computers and now are first in four of the eight computers. Third down, Dorsey, right side, Daryl Jones. Still up, now down. Ramon Johnson. Ramon Johnson. 
Again, this is this is like stealing for Ken Dorsey right now. No pressure, great protection up front. Guys running open, a tired defense for Boston College. And that's what you see when a defense starts getting tired, they start missing tackles in the open field. Gain of 15, first down and 10 at the 10. 31, 6, 5, 39 to go in the third. Here's Jackson. Inside the five to the three-yard line. I'm really impressed with how Butch Davis and his coaching staff was able to get their focus back. Because when Miami started this game, they did not have the kind of focus they needed in this football game. And somewhere towards the end of the first quarter, they got it straightened out. And ever since then, they have played downhill and have taken control of this football game. James Jackson over a thousand yards on that last carry. It's second and goal. Flag. Nice way to cap a senior year. Mm -hmm. And he has made a huge difference for this team. Over the last seven, eight ball games, he's averaged over 100 yards a game. He's become the feature back. Now, there's been injuries to Clinton Portis. There's been some injuries to Will McPartland, a fullback. So they had to move Najee Davenport from tailback over to fullback. And that's meant more carries and more opportunities for James Jackson. And he has certainly stepped up and, and stepped up his game. Penalty leaves it second down and goal, but now from the eight yard line into the corner. Intended for Andre King in complete third and goal. Andre King. Third down and goal. For the day for Ken Dorsey, four touchdowns, one interception. Has had one 300 yard plus game this year, and that was the huge win. A picture perfect come from behind drive against Florida State for the victory. First of October. I think we saw that win, didn't we? Yes, we did. And I think there are those in Seattle who will say, well, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> we saw watching the win over Miami earlier than that. Here's Jackson. Great He's effort. in. Touchdown. Great effort. The play was set up very well, but James Jackson, as soon as he saw a crease and saw the end zone, he accelerated to the goal line. Watch this play set up. Nice job by Dorsey selling the screen. Now he's got two blockers out in front, but when he sees the end zone, he accelerated right through Ramon Johnson, the free safety, for the touchdown. Ken Dorsey has been compared by many to a guy who played here in the mid-80s, a guy named Bernie Kozar. And his five touchdown passes today ties a school record he now shares with Bernie Kozar. What a great quarterback tradition at this school. And I know the first time I saw Ken Dorsey last year, we were here for the uh, Syracuse game, and immediately he reminded me of Bernie Kosar. The, the build, the tall, kind of lanky, a somewhat of a sidearm delivery, plays with great poise, a smart guy, makes good decisions, protects the football. And he has certainly played up to that level today in this ball game. Reason for the delay is a public address announcement being made to those gathered here to please refrain from throwing oranges on the field in the Orange Bowl. That, of course, symbolic of uh, a desire to get Miami into the Orange Bowl game, which will, of course, not be played in the Orange Bowl. It'll be, be played a little north of here.
the Exxon scoring recap. Let's find out how we got here. William Green opens the scoring for BC. They were up 6-3 after the first field goal of the game, and then Dorsey took over. Three first-half touchdown passes, including this one to Reggie Wayne. He also fired one in the second half to Santana Moss, and then his fifth touchdown toss of the day. This one to the running back, James Jackson, who barged in from the two, and it's 38-6, and that is how we got here. You know, you see Dorsey and his numbers, 252 yards, five touchdowns, and Moss and Wayne, Jackson, but it starts with that offensive line, and boy, are they good. the 22-yard line where he is cut down. And Boston College comes back on the field offensively. Tom O'Brien talked about coming out at halftime, we've got to get back to doing what we do best, and that's running the football, but the more Miami scores, the harder it is for Boston College to do what they do best. They've got to throw the football to have any chance. 38-6 on first down, Hasselback. Flips it out, caught by his tight end. Mike Guazzo. Number 80. Number 80. We've mentioned several times the one loss for the Hurricanes this year. It came out at Husky Stadium. Washington now 21 to 3 in the second quarter on this Tui Asasopo TD pass. Miami storm back in the third with three touchdowns. James Jackson's run. And after trading fourth quarter touchdowns, Miami's comeback fell short. The Huskies held on for a 34 29 victory in that game. Currently, they being the Washington Huskies, fourth in the BCS ratings. You know, and in all fairness to Rick Neuheisel and to his team, I think that there is some bias that has affected his team and, and the Pac-10 in general. I think the Pac-10 has been a great conference, second only to the Big 12 this year. And when you look at the computer rankings for Washington, one computer has them ranked 10th, one has them ninth, and another one has them eight. They're a better football team than that. And, and a part of that is they played a lot of close games, and some of these computer rankings are more affected by margin of victory. First down and 10. Hasselback, one man to block him. Goes deep, and it's incomplete. Hasselback. And let's go down to Jill Arrington. Well, Vern, with the BCS dilemma happening for the national championship, with that all on the line, Miami knew they had something to prove coming into this game. They needed to win, and they needed to win big. The question is, how big? When I talked to Coach Davis this week, he said, going into the fourth quarter, if they were up, he would have that decision. Do I run the score up with my starter, starters, or do I pull them, put my other players in, the ones who have poured out their heart and soul for this football team all year? We'll have to see what happens. It's getting interesting. Back to you guys. Yes, it is. Well, I know, I know some coaches for whom that would not be a dilemma. Yeah. A couple of them live in Florida. Well, if the tempo of this game keeps going the way it's going, he's going to be able to have his cake and eat it, too. He's going to be able to get a big win, a big score, and still get some of his guys that have, you know, sweat and bled just as much as, as any of the other guys on the team, any of his starters, let them play in their last home game of the 2000 season as well. Third and ten. 3-12 to go in the third quarter. Here comes the blitz. Hasselback under intense pressure gets rid of it, but the catch made by DeWalt is far short of the first down. And let's go back to New York once again check in with Tim. Vernon Todd, a wild one in the Bayou Classic after a grambling touchdown. This two-point conversion with seven seconds left could have sent to overtime. It's picked off by Andres Brown, who returns it for two for the Jaguars. Fellas, this game is so big that both teams forego the Division I AA playoffs because of the gate receipts at the Bayou Classic. All right, thank you, Tim. Well, that's one year where the game was actually more exciting than the halftime show that's of the man. Right. Santana Moss, he's got a wall. See ya. He's gone. That's his fourth 
return for a touchdown this year. And coincidentally, he has broken a 62-year-old Miami Hurricane record. 85 yards. Flags in the end zone. And it just means Todd Severs is going to have to kick a little extra long extra point because Santana Moss took his helmet off at the end of that punt return. And I don't think Butch Davis will have too many bad words for him after that. He is an, he is an amazing electrifying player. The oranges that came uh, out of that end zone hit the referee, as a matter of fact. So, two penalties. Well, this is a great return by Santana Moss. He got a huge block from Marquise Fitzgerald, and then it's just speed. The more that you're on the field against this speed, the more chances for you to get burned by it. And Santana Moss, another huge game in this, his final home game as a senior for the Hurricane. <laughs> now we have a third penalty marked off, a procedural call. Have you ever seen a 50-yard <laughs> extra point? I haven't. You're about to see an attempt from 50 for the extra point. That might be there. He got it! That's perfect. He should get a point and a half for that at least. Everything, but we're getting awfully close. 214 still to go, third quarter. Ibis is getting tired. 45-6. And it's not over. Now that really is an unfortunate byproduct of this whole system. Yep. The emphasis on margin of victory. Not the emphasis on, but it is a part of the process. 17 seniors playing their final game here. Among them, Santana Moss. Two touchdown catches from Ken Dorsey. And now an 85-yard punt return for a touchdown. Sievers to Ordway at the goal line. Turn certainly worthy of at least one more look. Well, here's Santana Moss, but watch the block set up by Marquise Fitzgerald right here. Junior out of St. Petersburg, Florida, huge block, and that's what got Santana Moss off and running. And then the wall gets set up over here, and then it's just pure speed. One key block by Fitzgerald, the wall is set up on the Miami sideline, and then the track star takes it to the end zone. First and 10, B.C. Washington. Now to the 25-yard line. Well, it has been a brilliant career for Santana Moss. Began this season touted as a Heisman hopeful. Suffered an injury, got off to a really slow start. But look at the records now. 2,546 receiving yards, 4,402 all-purpose yards. And he wiped out Eddie Dunn's record from 1938 on that 85-yard punt return. Washington has a blocker. Jamal Burke gives him a little bit of help, and Washington's down at the 42 after a 33-yard gain. Well, a nice cutback. We talked about the vision and the cutback of James Jackson for the Hurricanes. Same thing here for Cedric Washington. Watch him plant the right foot and then cut back across the grain 
Good blocking up front again by Boston College, and Cedric Washington gets his team across the 50-yard line. Miami going after. They're bringing pressure, and that time, the run got in behind the blitz. High formation on first down and 10. Washington. Nope. Dan Morgan again. Dan Morgan and Damian Lewis, two guys that have been through the, the bad times, the lean times, and now the great times for the Miami Hurricanes. Watch these two guys. There's Damian Lewis, gets the penetration, and there's Morgan to finish the job. Lewis making his 41st career start, Morgan his 42nd. Second down, 12. back steps up he'll keep it runs into Howard Clark and if it's possible in this game to go back to a single play to turn things around you'd have to point to the pass interception by Howard Clark returned 64 yards and then on the next play a touchdown for Miami to put them in front well, the worst part of that for Boston College is that they were in scoring position they had moved the ball and they were right in range and the next thing you know Miami was in the end zone and had to leave. That's the end of the third quarter with our score Miami 45 Boston College 6. We'll return to the Orange Bowl after this message and this word from your local station. your doctor about Zocor. Zocor, be there. Look, Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Ellie's renting again. And Enterprise picked her up again. She said Enterprise picks her up free. Free? Free. Now that makes renting easy. Mm -hmm. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Kentucky heads into Tar Heel territory to face Joe Forte and North Carolina as two of the nation's top teams jumpstart NCAA basketball on CBS. Don't miss an all-new episode of the number one Monday drama, Family Law. Listen, listen, listen. The 2001 Lincoln Town Car. The highest owner loyalty for three straight years. Now with a very attractive offer. Celebrate Town Car's luxury today with an exceptional lease. Just $5.19 a month for 36 months with 1038 cash due at signing. Hurry, this offer ends soon. See your Florida Lincoln dealer today. Jacksonville, a little girl had her hearing tested. A woman in Tampa learned she was pregnant. And in Miami, a father got some good news about his cholesterol. And even though it was a day of half a million reasons to worry, it was a good day. Because the last thing on half a million minds was health plans, which is exactly the way it should be. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Florida. The best health plan is the one you don't have to think about. Win a thousand bucks weekdays starting at five. Well, whatever it takes to get you to the game. 45 to 6. Oh, dear. We welcome you back to the Orange Bowl. Third down and 10. Hasselback. Tipped. Incomplete. 
It'll be fourth down. And Boston College will be forced to give it away again as we uh, get underway with the fourth quarter. Miami falling behind inexplicably, I think, 6-0, uh, but boy, they took charge, and, and they've not looked back. No, they haven't. They, they got their focus back. They've played extremely well. They're playing downhill, utilizing that speed on both sides of the ball. And now let's remember another thing that they're doing. Not only are they trying to get to the Orange Bowl, but they also are in the process of winning their first Big East championship since 96. Daryl Jones, oh, watch out. Say goodbye. Let's give Santana Moss a yeah, rest. Right. There's a flag at the 30-yard line. It might have to do with oranges. Unbelievable. You don't think this team has speed upon speed upon speed. Santana Moss gets a break, but Boston College doesn't. Daryl Jones, 88 yards for a second punt return touchdown. Thirteen special teams and defensive touchdowns this season. See Butch Davis say, I'm sorry. Hey, I saw an official get hit in Minnesota back in 1975. I'm aging myself again, but it can become a very serious proposition when things start getting thrown out of the stands. Officially, 87-yard punt return for a touchdown. Well, you saw a 50-yard extra point after the last Santana Moss punt return. How about a 35-yard extra point for Todd Sievers? He's in a groove. <laughs> Vern that Butch could have his cake and eat it too. This second punt return gives Miami a 52 to 6 lead. Now he's got the win impressively and he can call off the dogs. <laughs> 52 unanswered points. <laughs> They need a little help. Well, Oklahoma having their hands full with Oklahoma State right now in their in-state rivalry in Bob Simmons' last game. But, but as you have tried to explain to me, a <laughs> narrow Oklahoma win does not help Miami, no, right? It doesn't. Not as much as an impressive one or a loss. I think that Penn State degree is coming in handy. A little too much idle time. I just read too much about this stuff, maybe. 14.36 to go. Todd Seavers will kick off. And there was a penalty on the 35-yard extra point for Oranges on the field. So the kickoff comes from the 20. And there's J.P. Camella who takes it over the shoulder at the 30. And he has bounced out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Carl Walker gets the tackle. And we go down on the Miami sideline to Jill Arrington with Butch Davis. Coach, you talk, we talked about it this week. If you were up big in the fourth quarter, you might take out your starters and let some of the other players play. Where you're up big, it looks like you've answered your big dilemma. Well, we've, we've, uh, we've been during the third quarter. We started putting some second-team players in, some in the offensive line, some in the, at linebacker and defensive backs and stuff. But we're going to still continue to try to play and finish this game off. Well, your seniors are playing excellent. How proud are you of what they've been able to accomplish this season? Jill, these kids are unbelievable. They've, they've been a great deal to the, to the restoration of this program. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you, Jill. Here's Hasselback being chased by Lewis and Morgan. There is an appropriate punctuation mark to the win. Flushed out of the pocket by Damian Lewis and corralled by Dan Morgan. No substitutes in on the Miami defense right now. Damian Lewis made him get on his horse, and Dan Morgan corrals him for his 11th tackle of the day. And did we mention on a bad foot? 528 tackles in his career. Dan Morgan, second and 17. William Green.
Green, Dan Morgan. The handback is for William Green. Stop by Dan Morgan. Gain of 13. Still 12-7 with 5.42 left. And again, that hurts Miami. A close win by Oklahoma hurts Miami. Doesn't help him in any way. Injured player is Dan Morgan. Inspirational leadership from the senior. Well, Dan Morgan leads by example. He's not a real vocal guy, but he plays hard. Last week, he set the record for Big East tackles, and he has added to that number today, 11 tackles. Great instincts, great speed, great desire, and he plays through pain. And right now, Butch Davis also has to think of guys like Dan Morgan and Damian Lewis, who have played hurt all year, now we got to start thinking we need these guys to be healthy. We won't play again for a long time, but let's not risk a serious injury to some of our key players. What a career Dan Morgan has had. And his individual development as a player has kind of mirrored the development of the Miami Hurricanes. He'll rest, I would think, for the remainder of this one. Meanwhile, BC third and four. They've yet to make a third down conversion today. They're now 0 for 13. Jarrell Weaver with the tackle, number 58, fourth down. Boy, this is the last thing Boston College wants to see is whomever goes back there to return a punt. It will be, for the second time today, Daryl Jones. Moments ago, returned one 87 yards for a touchdown. That on top of the 85-yard return by Santana Moss at the end of the third quarter. Flags down, punts away. If the play stands, it will be a touchback. Well, Miami crossed the neutral zone. There was movement by Boston College, but I think that movement was a reaction to Miami being offsides. Here's the penalty over here. James Lewis, number 23, is going to jump off sides. And Boston College wouldn't have gotten the first down with the penalty and decided not to try to go for it and play defense. Play stop for the moment, 12.27 to go. A Home Depot college football on CBS is sponsored by Web TV, the United States Army, Centrum Performance, and by CBSMarketWatch.com. 12.27 to go in regulation, and it is 52 to 6, Miami. First down and 10. Davenport in the backfield. Here's Najee Davenport going left. Tackle at the 24. Tom O'Brien knew he was outmatched in this game, and they had a chance early, and I think his decision to not take the penalty and go for it on fourth down was uh, his concession. <laughs> the first concession that we've seen in the state of Florida here. Not the most important one, I guess. <laughs> Second, some time to follow. Second down and five. Dorsey fumble. Picked up by Portis. And he weaves for a first down after the 34-yard line. Well, there's such thing as a shovel pass. 
This is a dribble pass. Ball never cleanly exchanged. It's on the ground. It's kicked. It's picked up by Portis. The Bobble Ruski. <laughs> if Nebraska might put that in the playbook. Nine yard gain, first down and 10. First and 10, Miami, 11.23 to go. Portis for a yard. Now let's go back to New York and check in on the Oklahoma game. Once again, here's Tim. Oh, how close. At the 12-yard line, Asso Pogai throwing for his tight end, Marcellus Rivers. Derek Strait breaks it up. Still 3.15 remaining. Oklahoma clinging precariously to a lead. That was a fourth down play. Here it's uh, a little more decisive. 52-6, second down and nine. They toss it to Portis. He goes left. Ramon Johnson, number six, makes the tackle. Today's Rigid Tools Scholar Athlete Award goes to Ryan Birch of Boston College. Rigid Tools' commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to Boston College General Scholarship Fund. Third and five. There's Ryan Birch. Third and five, Miami. Draw play. They get another series of downs. First down, Portis out at the 48. Gain of 10. Scott Bradley with a tackle, number 54. Well, here is uh, how both teams have been hit in the Bowl Championship Series standing so far. On October 23rd, Miami was plus 238, then Florida State for a couple of weeks, then Miami on November 13th, after the big win over Virginia Tech, Florida State. I might as well be reading hieroglyphs. <laughs> Anthony Sands is the new quarterback in. And Portis gets the carry down to the 42-yard line. Here is Ethnic Sands, a sophomore out of Carroll City, Florida, suburb of Miami. Hasn't played much for the season. Eight of 11, though, throwing the ball. Second down and one. done for the day what a day it was five touchdown passes you know he, he he's got a role on this team where he's surrounded by great players but he still has to make plays I mean he can't just line up and and do nothing he's got to get the ball to the right people at the right time make good decisions and for a guy as young as he is, I think he's remarkable at doing that. And he's talented. I mean, he can flat out throw the football. Sands gives it off to the freshman fullback, D.J. Williams, down at the 22-yard line. Now, Vern, regardless of where Miami ends up in January and, and who they play, whoever plays this Miami team is going to get a team that is as good as anybody in the country right now and playing that way. And offensively, I think they're the best, and defensively, over the last month, they have just gotten better and better. Well, they've given up six points today. Second down and six. Sands, Portis coming right. Hurdles. Out of bounds, 52-6. Well, the one victory here for Boston College came back in 1984, remember? Flutie flushed. Throws it down. Caught by Boston College. I don't believe it. It's a touchdown. The Eagles win it. Unbelievable. I don't believe it. <laughs> Fairly memorable. Mm. A couple weeks after that, Doug Flutie won the Heisman Trophy. On 
first down. Hand off to Portis. Who was the opposing quarterback in that game? Fairly decent man of accomplishment himself, Bernie Kosar and Doug Flutie. Wow. Tough to pick a uh, player of the game in that one. I was talking to Kevin O'Malley, who's a good friend and was then a vice president of CBS, who arranged that game. And they tried. The game was originally scheduled in 1984 for September. And he convinced the two schools, respectively, to move it to Thanksgiving weekend. It was played. 16 years ago on the 23rd one of the more memorable games in college football history second down here's Epinick Sands into the end zone incomplete also fun to hear those voices Todd on that tape yeah Brent Musburger was doing the play-by-play -play and he was uh, paired up with Eric Parsegian and Pat Hayden and uh, it was fun last night. I was watching tape of the Boston College Notre Dame game. And there was my good friend and former partner, Mr. Hayden, noticeably shorter than his cohort on that game. <laughs> and then I turned on the television set after I turned off the tape, and they were replaying the 1974 Southern Cal Notre Dame game. Pat Hayden, that quarterback. Whatever happened to him? Third down, it'll be fourth. You know, we've talked so much about the computers and, and their effect on the BCS. The other thing is strength of schedule, and, and where that comes into play is opponents' records and opponents' opponents. And so teams are that are still in it watching the scoreboard. Miami played these teams, Pittsburgh and West Virginia, Syracuse and Rutgers. Of course, Georgia Tech's big win over Georgia today helps Florida State. Seavers with a field goal. Oh, missed it. He hits a 50-yard extra point <laughs> and a 35-yard extra point, but the pressure was too much to bear on the field goal. Apparently, some people don't know Dremel also makes cordless rotary tools. Dremel cordless rotary tools. For every problem, there's a Dremel solution. Is your dandruff sending the wrong signals? Get Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue. So don't send the wrong signals. Get Selsun Power. So you want to get more out of life? <laughs> Take a bubble bath. Smile more. Fall in love. Fall in love. This is your homeland. Read a book by Henry Miller. Do the Lombarda, the forbidden dance. Once in your life, it couldn't hurt. Get a really cool car. <laughs> I want to tell you about a brand new way. Brand new way of quitting smoking. It's unique. It's effective. It's orange. New Nicorette Orange. It's Nicorette. So I still help prevent cravings on my own regular schedule. I still help answer cravings with another piece. And now I have orange. Brand new orange flavor. Only from Nicorette. Here, taste this. Now this just may be a flavor I can quit with. Sometimes victory's so close. You can taste it. You can do it. New Nicorette Orange can help. The NFL today. That's a bad call. It's on every frequency, and he makes no sense. They were going to knock you in the mouth. Sundays on CBS. Tonight on CBS begins with the new drama, That's Life, starring Paul Sorvino and Ellen Burstyn. Then Chuck Norris stars as Walker, Texas Ranger, followed by Craig T. Nelson in the new hit drama, The District. It's all here tonight on CBS. You leave me speechless. <laughs> Craig T. Nelson, he can do everything. He can coach football. He can bust heads as a police commissioner. He's the best, man. Todd's becoming the new king of promos. Going to retire that trophy at the seminar next summer. <laughs> Second down. Brian St. Pierre has come in at quarterback for Boston College. We're at the six-minute mark. Final, Oklahoma. Over Oklahoma State. Now you have admonished me for two months 
to be patient that this would all work itself out, that I need not be concerned and get filled with angst. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's going to work out this okay. year, Vern. I, <laughs> That's the, only I way, right. the only way that it, that it possibly could have worked out is, is maybe if Miami would have lost today. Because with Miami winning, now even if Oklahoma loses to Kansas State next week, which very well could happen, and Florida State plays Miami in the Orange Bowl, Washington is still sitting there with a legitimate argument at 10 and 1 and having beaten head to head Miami. On third down, here's the handoff. Derek Knight, number 20. Fifty-two unanswered points today. And that is our CBS Sports Line stat of the game for complete college coverage. Go to cbs.sportsline.com. You know who we haven't mentioned yet? The Oregon State That's right. Beavers. That's right. Great season for Dennis Erickson. And not only are they not going to play in the championship game, there's a good chance they don't even get a BCS game. Right. Fall way down after a terrific season. Best season in the school history at 10 and 1. Daryl Jones grabs it down at the 35. That's the look of a guy who's played hard. Kelly just rewrote his will. To his wife, he'll leave two homes and his investment portfolio. He'll leave other assets to his children. All his beneficiaries are here. All except the IRS, who could get two-thirds of everything. See how we earn it. Solomon Smith Barney. Pauses live TV and a lot more. Monday, wild things are happening on the Late Show. My toupee! Don't miss animal expert Jack Hanna, plus the divine Bette Midler. Monday on Dave. 424 to go in the game. 52-6. Miami leads Boston College. Ken Dorsey with Butch Davis. Five touchdown passes today. Ethnic Sands is in at quarterback now on first down and 10. Najee Davenport gets the handoff, comes right. Skips out of a tackle and dances down the sidelines. There's one game that uh, in, a, in a, an unusual way might affect all of these things. It goes back to Virginia Tech scheduled to play Georgia Tech August 27th in Blacksburg. The game canceled because of lightning. Now, where this becomes significant is in the strength of schedule for opponents, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it, had, it would have had an effect. And you take a look, if the game would have been played, what the effect would have been. Currently, Florida State, the third toughest schedule, Miami fifth. And there you see what happens if either one of those teams would have won. So it definitely would have had an impact on where we're at today. Quick flip outside. Michael Stewart. And there's another tradition, and somebody else is going to get it. Who's this going to? Second down and seven. Not too bad in a place like this. 
How about next Saturday night if Oklahoma does beat Kansas State and they do that to Bobby Stoops when it's about eight degrees with the wind chill factor in Arrowhead Stadium? Well, once again, let's go back to New York and Tim Brando. All right, Vern. Watch this. Arizona's Lamont Frazier is blocked by Brett Busher. We're talking basketball here. Willie Dean comes down the floor with the open layup. Boilermakers take a 72-69 win away. And don't forget, next week, the season premiere of NCAA basketball on CBS. Number seven, North Carolina meeting number 22, Kentucky. No computers necessary. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. <laughs> Second down. This is Jason Gathers, number three. Man, that should be enough to get the first down. That's Art Kehoe, the offensive line coach, and he really deserves a lot of credit because he's a guy who played here, he's been a coach here for a long time, and this is an outstanding offensive line that the Miami Hurricanes have. I mean, you talk about the weapons and the ability to run and throw. If they don't do it up front, they don't get any of it done. Well, you want to get that headset yeah, out of the way. Boy. First down and 10. Gathers and Nick Nettles in the backfield. Bring this one back. There's a big score because that not only affects the BCS, not the championship game, but it affects the Big East. Right now, if you look at the Big East Conference, Miami is going to be in the BCS. If Notre Dame holds true, I would say they go up here into the BCS as well. Virginia Tech, they play tonight against Virginia. They still could creep into the BCS as an at-large team with an impressive win tonight. If not, they'd fall to the Gator Bowl. Pittsburgh coming off their big win over West Virginia. Walt Harris will get his team to a good bowl. And Boston College, this team still headed to a bowl. They have one more game to finish on a better note than today. Gathers, scoots down the sidelines. A first down Miami at the 27-yard line. That's a gain of 20 with 2.23 to go in the game. Now we've got a huge crew that works together to present these college football telecasts every week, and we'd like to thank as many of them as we can. The executive producer of Home Depot College Football is Terry Ewart. The coordinating producer is Craig Silver. Today's game directed by Bob Fishman. Look at look at the two proud fathers in there, huh? That's Bob Fishman to the left, Dennis Stone, our technical director, over to the left, and Craig Silver, Lena and Jack, and Matt and Andy, the kids involved. Gathers, heading left. Sean Robbins was the rather tall fellow who's our associate director. Sitting to the left, the... Studio show today produced by Ben DeVito, directed by Linda Molino. Sean Robbins, coordinating Stretch. producer of CBS, is Harold Bryant. The associate director today is that fellow, the tall one with the unusual pink hat. The associate producer, Roger Wilson, and the broadcast associates are Seller Shine, Corey Fishman, technical manager, Bob Jamison, sitting in the back of the truck, and the technical director, Dennis Stone, are... Chief Audio Engineer Jack Stalker and Burke Fleming up here on the booth. We've got a bunch of guys up here we should thank, too. Matt Stein here. There's Skippy Shackelford. <laughs> One of our mini fellas. Mike Bro. Go, Bro. Michael Marks, Pride of Kentucky. James Arminio peering up at us. He's a local. Third down. Nettles and gathers. Way up in the end zone, Glenn Roth. Frank Lombardo. Bruce Levitt. <laughs> Telling you, we got a large group. Yes, we do, and a good group. They make this whole thing extra special. Fourth and four. And the ball will go over on downs at the 20-yard line. 
<laughs> Rich Glendorf. Oh, dear. The robotic camera. It's amazing how those things work. You know, we should say, too, Vern, one of the people that works with us, our engineer in charge, Deb, her dad, Don Drown, is in the hospital in Ohio watching today and just wish him a speedy recovery and uh, hope he had a happy Thanksgiving, even though he's a little under the weather. And here in the booth, Matt Stein and uh, Joe Castagna, our spotters, Chuck Gardner, Santa Monica Chuck, that would be. Statisticians. There's Matt Stein. Best spotter. In, well, I can't. No, say no, you it. can't Joe, say that. Joe's right up there, too. I got Joe. We got Joe. the two best spotters in the business. Well, the third one is back home. That's right. There's the handoff left side, Derek Knight. Howard <laughs> Drip and Cindy Craven back in graphics. I know we missed a few, didn't mean to, but uh, it's a terrific group of people who travel around this part of the country each week. 52-6 the final. Now not to do but wait and put it in the hands of the computer guys.